come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> yeah, every once in a while there is a podcast. There is every once in a while it happens. Uh, a podcast that is so a podcast unlike so any other great that <laughs> reaches so many distances. I yeah, will say. that you is so. Hit, you almost hit me in the I, I did. Just, it's so profound and so yeah. detailed. That it opens so, up doors in your mind. Yeah, and we experienced that tonight. Yeah, and, we and sometimes want to, the universe isn't ready for you to. No, no, I mean, we didn't no. want to no. shock you with the insight that we came up with for tonight's podcast on Ghost in the Shell. You weren't welcome ready to for the it. Saturday Night Free Show. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. episode starts with a warning to you. We had the greatest episode in <laughs> podcast history. Uh-huh. They only Just come around every once in a while. waiting for you to hear. And we knew this as we were talking about it. But you it. motherfuckers weren't worthy. But we didn't think you were ready. And I'm sorry to you listeners. Maybe you think you oh, are, it was the gods. Not. The gods of themselves. Right. We were like, so it excited. Was, tonight. It was the ghost in the shell that stopped right. you from happening. The ghost came yeah. out of the shell to tell us you were not ready. So we put that. So it ate the fuck So it ate <laughs> Yeah. That's what so we're it saying. So destroyed yeah, the file. Evil audio gremlins. I, I imagine that file was like uh, in dogma when you hear God's voice, Alanis Morissette, and your like, brain explodes. Yeah. That's probably what Basically was lost. What so yeah. we did we, you all yeah. a favor, really. Right. Yeah. You know? We didn't want that to happen to you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, God said, uh, we're going to eat this file. Yeah. So what we're going to attempt to do briefly, because we've already done this. Before this evening, we've talked and maybe before before Ghost in the Shell <laughs> one and a half at length. times. Yeah, uh, so we're going to try and do it again and do it briefly. Yes. And at this point, we are more than half in the bag. <laughs> we didn't even start the timer. Like maybe three quarters in the bag. Yeah, there's there's I mean there's a bag. Sean has a new bag. Over there. <laughs> so I do. You will we're either <laughs> partially in this bag right now. You're either going to like this or you're going to hate it. <laughs> Who are we anyway? You said you're Sean. I said I'm Sean of the Saturday Night Freak Show. I'm Holly of the Saturday Night Free Show. <laughs> I'm Michaela. And I'm Kyle. Of what? <laughs> Michaela? <laughs> of the very same podcast, the Saturday Night Free Show. Ah, there we go. Well, then again, I'm Colin of the Saturday Night Freak Show. Tonight I did pick the movie that I inflicted upon the group You've got called The Ghost in the Shell. Why did you pick this movie, Colin? Because there's a new Ghost in the Shell coming out. There is. Starring Scar Joe. <clears throat> so you thought this was worthy of uh, revisiting? Wanted to go this back, coming out? look at the old one, so we would have it to contrast with right. the new one. What is it about it the old one epic. that somebody viewed this and thought, hey, we need to make this movie? That's a really good question, Sean. <laughs> Again, with big stars and big budget and big effects. Like, what, what did people see in this movie that made them want to go, hey, it has Let's cheap it licensing. Again. And there's nipples. Maybe. <laughs> it has cheap licensing. True. You it has cheap licensing at- that is probably about to expire. I mean, maybe. Because it's Japanese. Is that what we're saying? Like, the, the, it's run out of... You know how many movies there are in the Ghost in the Shell se- the series? Like animated movies? Probably too many. Probably too many. Well, I was going to say there's at least two. I'm not sure. So there's Ghost in the and Shell. The complex, whatever it was. The side by standalone, complex, standalone complex. complex. And Ghost in the Shell 2, Innocence. We didn't have that information the title. first time around. No, we didn't. This is what happens when you spend yeah. hours this is exploring. Brand new information. Because uh-huh. yeah. we had time to go smoke. We had time. We had time to, to wait for the computer to contemplate reboot. the world. So there's information that you wouldn't have had the first time around during the Ghost in the Shell 1.0 podcast. Ghost in the Shell is what a is movie, movie about a cybernetic soldier Major. named Major. With major nipples. Who's oh, frequently naked. Oh, half-hearted high five. Hey. Bravo, yay. <laughs> Running around Neo-Tokyo. Can you say that? Is that Neo-Tokyo? Akira? Is it like San well, it's Francisco? What? It's 20, 2029 Tokyo. 2029, Which year. we've determined is the magic number. We've determined it is, this. We've this is the third this time we've determined this. <laughs> but uh, this So Ghost year. in the Shell is 2029. Logan is 2029. Terminator is 2029. So a lot of shit's going to go down in 2029. Yeah. 2029. It's gonna, so many people are going to show up in 2029. Yeah. Go. Maybe that's maybe now that I've said that, is the that fucking recording end? is going to stop again. Is that, is that what makes it stop? Skynet coming back and fucking changing the future so we don't get the message out <gasps> about 2029. You scared me for a second. I'm like, is this fucking <laughs> yeah, stopping not, again? No, no, oh, it's still going. Okay, it's still going. <laughs> maybe. Like we, right, we're, like, we're revealing information that the world doesn't want us to know, mm-hmm. and so they keep shutting us down. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Whoa. 
<laughs> we can only hope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hope we yeah. stumble onto something like that. That would be major. Yeah. You know how many viewers, Ooh, listeners we, we'd get? If we, we would turn into Charlie Sheen in The Arrival then at that Basically point. Basically at that point. Very be all sweaty, crazy and very sweaty. sweaty. Yeah. We're all we, would all, sweaty. we would all get really sweaty. Yeah. Yeah. Move you to know, Central yeah. America. Why not? It's going to be hot all over the place. Uh, this is uh, Mamoru Oshii's. Yeah. Futuristic animated masterpiece. Oh, You're just reading it, words. Now. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> it seamlessly merges traditional cell animation with the latest no, computer this is graphic not your, imagery. Shut up. No, 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 no. You're reading, yeah, the, you're back reading the back of the video box. box. You're reading the video box. Son of a bitch. No, don't. you're reading no. the the box art. Stop it. The video you box stop art. it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't try and yeah. fake this shit. No. What do you with think? A, of this without movie? reading, Colin, what the fuck is this movie? You tell me. This is a well, it's a movie about a major. A uh, synthetic major who has a ghost in her shell. She's got a fake body. The ghost is her soul. It inhabits the fake body. She wants to be human, we think. Does We're she? not entirely Does sure. We don't know. Should we, we just that. go with this at this point, or are we Does just going? No, like, because it doesn't There's not enough like, evidence for that. That, okay. she, you know. that her want. She, she doesn't show much want in this movie. She reacts to the things that are happening around her, but she doesn't show much want, like where she wants to go. She's She, she wants does her to, job. Well, she yeah. wants to do her job, but that's all I know as far as her. That wants seems to go. be the only thing she really cares about is doing it really her does. job. Was she designed to do that specifically? I think yes, because there's mention that the corporation that makes the synthetic bodies makes them for the military or the government. Okay, so she was built for government work. Okay, which is to locate. In this case, she's part of a police force called Section Nine. Nine. I think she's. Woo! I got one, you guys. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Awesome, yeah. you can go sit down for five yep, minutes. Time out. <laughs> uh, that tracks down or is tasked with tracking down a hacker known as the Puppet Master. You can just say this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I trying to make it more interactive. I knew that one too, for the record. Uh, yeah, we were just all sipping master. our beer at the time he asked. <laughs> yeah. Has been. Uh, I can't remember if that was this episode or the last one. I did the whole thing about the garbage can and all that. That didn't make any sense, so don't do that. Okay, so we're not going to do that. So the puppet master is a hacker who's been hacking into uh, corporations, banks, governments, and people. How do you hack into people? I only knew about the people. I think you're making the other shit up. No, they said that's why they want him. He's an international criminal. Well, because everything's connected via the super internet of the future. It feels like it is. You know. They, they they didn't say there was like they said like even most humans still have like cybernetic parts right. to them. At this point so. in the future, everybody has been at some point enhanced in some way uh, cybernetically. Yes. Like there are uh, cybernetic human beings from top to bottom, and then there are regular like the humans, major, like the major, and then they're just human beings who have just had like implants, like as, her as it goes. Coworker, cop guy, who, yeah, who he just has know, the thing that he can talk to her. Do. I wish they would have had like a more tango and cash relationship. I wish you know? that too. Yeah, like like he, they should have really played up the cop relationship between. They really those should. Two. Yeah. He seems more tentative to explore that relationship. He's like, eh. yeah. Because there's certain elements where she's they even, like... They set it up so well. And he's like, why me? And she's all like, because you're mostly human and we need that dynamic. And she like explains it. And I'm like, why did that goes nowhere on that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she sets that up and then it That was never like pays the most off. interesting part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they don't explore like the elements of humanity that that these characters find interesting, or like why. But they do talk about them a lot. They do, but they're not like they talk about them very. Uh, um, what should we call it? Uh, it's profound, Sean. Oh no, they're that's a profound. The word you're reaching but it feels for. like a very like uh, <laughs> clean way. Yeah, like they're a, a per- hospital. So like, that's you know? oh, clinical. Yeah, every, very yeah. clinical way. That feels like they're talking. There about are parts it. of yeah. this movie. It seems like characters are just reading from like a psychology it does. textbook, and they're talking mm-hmm. right. To and that's us. the problem is that they're not like they're not. Human Humanizing that information, yeah, at all. No, they're just they're delivering it like the voice actor is reading a psychology yeah, they're, textbook. They're explaining everything as though it's so technical, but they're not actually showing any emotion. You know? Yeah, it's weird. It's. Uh, I was it's like, am I alone to, on that? No, 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 no. We're just no. checking to make sure the recorder <laughs> was still going. Yeah. It is. At this point, we don't trust anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's a very stilted delivery that they're giving, and we were very di- staccato. Yeah. Yeah, we were discussing earlier um, whether this was like on purpose because she is a synthetic human being at this point, or if it is just the actors because. Um, the way in which they're delivering it, like I've seen before in the very few animes I've seen, and in like uh, uh, Japanese video games, like when they do the American uh, voices on them, it's very uh, stuttered delivery on them. 
Like, I think of the first Resident Evil when they're in the fucking lobby discussing. It's like, you, Jill, the master of unlocking, yeah, please yeah. take this. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they go to, like, the same kind of central casting or whatever for voiceover stuff. But they end up, like, whenever they do an upgrade to these things, they did it with Akira. Mm-hmm. They did it with Ghost in the Shell. They did it with Silent Hill. They've done it with mm. several, you know, Resident Evil. They remade yeah. the whole game. But, oh, like, yeah. in those other cases, they have, at some point, revoiced them. Right. You know, to make them a little more palatable because they're, like, the first version of it is yeah, like, it's just not Jesus Christ who the you know these, these are not bad. people yeah 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 it's like that um that software where you can like speak into the microphone and it dictates that's dragon, what it sounds like yeah. in this movie or dragon dragon Dra- simply speaking yeah oh, something like that just, yeah like, type yeah into it and then yeah. just like speak it yeah yeah just, that's what it, yeah. that's what some Naturally of the voice speaking. acting sounds like yes. yeah <laughs> bringing it home for the win yeah <laughs> like <laughs> like Tommy Wiseau could be a voice actor for for dubbing that would be great because you know that's about how good was, these people I wish are he would like give license to his voice for like a fucking uh this gotta be a sound or something and, yeah yeah GPS. oh yeah. god i would pay a lot of money for i that. would i might <laughs> like to get him on my phone telling me where to go oh like, god that'd be great that'd be so you can make this yourself Let's make it probably. happen all right uh, maybe so he's probably all right here we gotta focus now i know we're yeah, we're, we're a bit yeah. blitzed this movie. <laughs> we're a bit a bit blitzed. Right. So <laughs> we're, we're blitzed. That, we're tired. And this is the third time we're doing it's, this. Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's like what are you talking about? It's like mid 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 afternoon and somebody's listening to this. Uh, the okay, so the the idea we're trying to pin down, we weren't able to do it before. Why no. would we be able to do it now? <laughs> yeah. The motivations <laughs> of why the major we were saying that the puppet master has been hacking these people. Yeah. And For what the purpose? puppet master seems to all right, this is what I'm just going to... I'm going to throw this out there. Okay. The throw it out there. Throw it. Throw it. Chuck it. The it. puppet master has been doing all of this in order to get close to the major because he wants to merge with the major. He why? says this. But why? <clears throat> what is, well, I'm what saying is why he's been doing everything that he's been I doing. I agree with you. I agree with what you're saying, but why? <clears throat> he's been trying to do this because in the major, he sees a kindred spirit another artificial body with a human spirit inside it like him. Right. And, uh, somehow he thinks that combining those two will create a being that is more, more human, more human. This is what I'm taking out of the movie because that's what the, that's what the, the uh, puppet master wants. Yes. Not necessarily what the major wants. The major keeps talking about, she has a whisper in her ghost. What does that mean? The set in her voice. That I kind of took that as like in Dexter, you know, he talks about as the dark passenger that talks to him and like tells him to do things and like gives him a gut instinct. I thought that's that, like what it was it, for her. I thought, I thought it was like, like her conscience. Because she yeah. uses right, it as yeah. intuition. It's like something extra for a synthetic that they necess- don't but necessarily should have. But she's aware of it. Have. Right. But I think that's yeah. what makes her special. She right. might be one of the only people that is aware of that inner voice. Mm-hmm. I think that's like, what makes her special. Maybe that's why the puppet master seeks her out. Actually, we it assume. Took us three times to get to this but point. We, we have been assuming also that there are, that she is not the only uh, mo- make and model, right? Of, no, right. it seems like there's. Versions not of her, but of like her, like you said, make and model, like just doing other things. Yeah, it like, feels like in, she even in section one later. nine, there's yeah, well, one of the mannequins in the yeah, I thought, store window. Or one of the a, people like it's sitting an office table. worker. Yeah. She yes. turns around and looks yeah. as she yeah. goes by on the model. boat. Yeah, that's not yeah. the same model. That's the girl that they based her design on. Why would they? What do you think? Oh, blow my mind, man! Wait, so, wait. So you're saying that they have like real people doing office work, but but like cyborgs doing police work? Yeah. Because it's dangerous. That seems a little backwards. Right. Well, it's dangerous. I, 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 no, I think the girl the, uh, in the office window is another cyborg. She well, just recognizes it as another version of her. She just She's aware of what she looks like, so she can recognize yes. the other people. So. Yes. There's a point Okay, to well, that throws exactly. off what I was... Because I was like, well, what? how else do we know? Like, where else did they tell us that, like, there's a company making robots... For use in police work, and she is not the only one. Like she's like, is she the most advanced model, the first one who's gone into this type of work? In which case, that would be what makes her. She's the only robot say. that sees that you know she's got this soul thing, and and that's what makes the puppet master attracted to her, and her attracted to the puppet master. Because like, what's going on in there? I have to dive into this consciousness to find out how it works because it's so similar to mine. No? 
I Did you know. assume that? Would it make it any better? What'd you say? Would it make any better? <laughs> uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Everyone yeah. take a drink. Yeah. Everyone take a drink. Yep. There you go. <clears throat> We're still pondering the mysteries of Ghost in the yeah. Shell. I mean, it climaxes with a scene where the puppet, ma- where she, the major, dives right yeah. into cyberspace. That's what we're saying. We're calling this the cyberspace of the puppet master's mind. Yeah, where he tells her that literally he wants to merge with her, and they are going to make somehow in the end of this because they're both destroyed. Right? Yeah. That's the other thing. I didn't understand why uh, the major was suddenly a target of the government at the end, and they had to blow up her and the uh, and the puppet master. Like another body. Se- like section six didn't. I don't know. Maybe he knew the puppet master's plan at that point. Section six was like, just kill them both. We know what he's trying to do. They didn't it's tell like a us this. Story they don't tell us an this. explanation for. They don't yeah. tell us. Actually, this now that I'm thinking about it, you know, when we were sitting there saying after the movie, I was like, did we miss like you know the last third of this movie? That was the information that I, I was so. missing that would have at least provided some kind of connective tissue because there was that. Why are they suddenly going after the major? They're on the same team now. We're just going to kill the major. Uh, and why do why does the major want to meet the puppet master? Why does the puppet master want to join with? The major. None of those questions, questions. are answered. Not so that's really. why we're making these assumptions right yep. or wrong, because we're just trying to plug shit in where the, we don't think it's right, there. Where there are gaps, apparently. And I think there are gaps if you view this listener, not just us not getting something. I think there are actual gaps in this movie. Nothing yeah, okay. is explicitly. I agree. So we're never going to explain this. And don't tell us to go read the manga. That's not, no, that's not I don't an excuse. Hear that bullshit. Don't, don't, tell me, don't like, fucking well, tell us that. If you read the manga, it says this. And like, I, no, this is a shouldn't movie. have to. No, no shouldn't have to. Research ahead of time. No, None. this is where we're at. We're watching the movie. The movie should give us everything we need to know. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not saying that it needs to spoon feed us. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it needs to give us enough information. No, but that's called storytelling. Right, you exactly. Know? Yeah, there so, are basic yeah. elements of storytelling you need to give us in order to be like, Cohesive yeah. and figure out a story. Yeah. Do we think that there are cultural assumptions that are a given in the Japanese culture? Such as? I don't know. I don't that's think so. Well, I'm saying, like, you know, maybe, you know. That's why we're getting holes that we don't understand because there's a, oh. there's because a culture they, gap. Because they assume yeah. that, like, when you see this story, you are assuming that, you know, she's the, the first of her kind mm-hmm. or that right. she just Is wants that to be human yeah. or something like that. We go into it and we're like, well, you're not saying that in the movie. And they're like, well, if you lived in Japan, they've done a fucking hundred of these things. Every time we do this story, it's mm, this way. I don't know, because like there are other there's other anime that like is is more literal with its storytelling, you know. So I I, I don't think that's a symptom of their culture. I just, just think it's bad writing, you know, like uh, like Attack on Titan is like a very literal interpretation of like the impact of American culture on Japan. Like, very literal. Like, to the point that there's big white people, like, invading their towns. Oh, like, so, wonderful. like, they're not, they're not, like, subtle with it in that anime, you know? So, mm. like, the fact that they're, like, subtle to the point of it not even existing in this... No, this is just bad writing, I think. I don't think it's a cultural thing. Especially, like, Akira is another example, too. Akira... It, I don't have a problem following the story in that anime at all. Like... It, it's it's a little complex, but it's I don't feel like there's big gaps in it the way there is in this movie, and maybe that's because Akira is more of like an emotional story. You're following an emotional journey, where there's there is no emotion in this movie whatsoever. No. Like it is very uh, clinical and you know mm-hmm. sterile very. Uh, in its approach. Yeah. It's yeah. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> but that also extends to its visual design. Mm-hmm. Right, very mm-hmm. clinical visual design of the yeah. future. Feels like it, yeah. We say clinical because there's a lot of time spent uh, lovingly lingering on shots of weaponry and the mechanics right. of weaponry. Yes, and the mechanics of technology and yeah. even stop signs. Yes, there futuristic is, stoplights on boats. There are three specific designers for this movie. I believe it was character design, um, city design, or like the backgrounds and everything, and then uh, weapon design. So, like, they made that a specific thing that they wanted to highlight, at least in the credits of this movie. But that is something that they focused on when making this movie. Design of the weapons and everything that that entails. It's like an American equivalent of this type of uh, of movie. Mm-hmm. Animation. I'm talking about a science fiction animated American film. 
where That's you would do the same. I mean, I assume that you would have different departments. You know, maybe you have sure. a production designer designing. This is what the sets look like, right? right? Mm-hmm. Star Chaser. Remember that? We, no, what is Star Chaser? That's a science fiction movie. That's all. It was American. Star Chaser. Yeah, but there was American uh, animation style. To me, growing up with it, mm-hmm. you know, like back in the day before this thing came out, was uh, and probably animated by Japanese uh, animators. <clears throat> but it was defined by paint, uh, painted backgrounds, mm-hmm. right, which were kind of smeary and more suggestive of yeah. anything than they were mm-hmm. uh, very well defined. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, you remember the Transformers transforming, right? Yeah. Uh, like what? Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. It was just kind of like a shape. Like if you were to slow that down, there's a shape. Right. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Anime Rather than the comes along and anime is like. We're going to, yeah, we're going to take the time to like Detail. every single, you know, office in that building. It's going to have like a guy to, die. they're each doing different things. There's a person in there. They've each got their own little separate thing happening. That's why I think those sequences take so long. Cause they're just like, look at this shit that we drew, you know, look, yeah. at, look, how we this. Yeah. look at how this stuff all fits together. There were some shots that weren't computer aided where like a, you know, a, uh, a hovering space, uh, Airship, <laughs> yes. space, spacecraft, spaceship. a hovering airship like moved over the camera. Yeah. Right. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, that's not computer assisted. There were other ones that you could tell that it was a door mm-hmm. of a helicopter comes down. I'm like, yeah, computer assist. But this was like hand animated the whole way or going under yeah. a bridge or whatever. It might have been copied. And it was sitting there. I was sitting there going like, holy shit. They like, you know, drew every single frame on this with enough. All with this level of detail to it, it's impressive, I guess, when is the cumulative effect, right? Mm-hmm. Is that you sit there going like the amount of work that was right. put into this thing is like, wow, that's maybe that's why everybody says, you know, you got to sit up and take notice of it because of the art style that's being done in it. Right. But what is the story and service of that art style? Like, that's not enough to make it a good movie. Yeah. yeah. So you can't just yeah. be like, yeah, the well, art's the story, so great. The story, the story, but the yeah. story itself is intriguing. Yeah. The, yeah. I just set up the it just idea. doesn't pay yes. off in the third act, right. though. Right. Like, the first act is great, I think. I think the second act is a little more boring. Third act yeah. really falls apart. Yeah. There's no culmination in what we've, I, I guess, has been set up for the beginning parts of this movie. Like, what is the ultimate goal for these characters? Like, what do they want? What do they want, Colin? Well, I don't necessarily know. Again, I think I we're think all, we're supposing I, I have. A lot. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this time around when we were talking about, it, I'm like, well, you know, we were overthinking it the other time. Maybe. So I mean, it is this easy, right? I, it seems like it should be that easy. It's like, like it they, seems like a very easy. Movie. It's easy because you're because everyone's just filling in your own answers now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Because exactly. you're just. It, 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 we're not remembering the movie. We're filling it in. But I wonder yeah. if. You know, I'm still working on this hypothesis going off of, you know, my own way of putting it together. So, right. (laughs) Open to interpretation. (laughs) Right. I'm like, okay. So if, if it is like, well, you know, because I may remember the first time I saw a movie like Suspiria, right? Mm -hmm. You're thinking there's a lot more there, but there isn't. The story in Suspiria is like fucking A to B to C to D simple. And you're like, well, there's no twist. I saw that coming from like frame one. Maybe this is the same way where it's like, well, these no, are all not. parts that you've seen. No, I'm going to shut that down right now. But, <laughs> but, listen, oh, then the, but my point being that you're actually supposed to be looking at like the details along the way. Right. And like the plot is just like, yeah, the plot. If the, okay, if the plot was A to B to C, like Suspiria in this movie, we would be able to know what all the characters' motivations were start to finish. And no one here can tell me what anybody's motivation was. Yeah. At you any did. point. I got it this time. You I feel it. You got it. Blank? Yeah. Well, how yeah. do we know that's not it? Because Once it clicked, I'm like, uh, it's totally it. Boom. Done. No, this is you thinking about it after seeing it. Not If you have to put that much work into a movie after you've watched it to fill in the gaps, that's not, not good writing. Like, if you have to fill in all the gaps after you've watched a movie. There is a difference yeah, between yeah, every David good. Lynch movie that I watch. You fill in the gaps, like, after the movie. I still like I don't know experience. if you're supposed to fill in the gaps for a David Lynch movie. Like, I think he intends for those gaps to be there. So I think that's a different experience altogether. Where this movie, I feel like they think they filled in all the gaps, mm-hmm. but they didn't. That's it's, what it I think feels it feels like that more so in this movie. 
That, yeah. Just, like, they know their own story. They just assume we know it, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that may be the lost in translation. Between or the it's the adaptation America. from the manga to it the... Feel, mm-hmm. They're like, be. you already are familiar with this because you read the comic book. But yeah. that's, I understand that's what you're saying. Maybe. I Which don't is know. not how we make movies in America. We just say, fuck the source material and make whatever we want to make, you know? Mm-hmm. So... I mean, I think it's, it, there's a layer of complexity to the plot that is unnecessary. Uh, and the way that they talk about, you know... Uh, Naruto Company, uh, Section Nine, Section Six. Yeah. We, you know, we've got the finance minister from X, this country that's over yeah. here and is seeking asylum need. for this. And you're like, okay, I don't know who you're talking about or what's going on, and this is just right. confusing as all. And we don't hell. need it at a certain point. It's just like, <clears throat> but that's not to say that it's not there. It's right. just they're throwing so much detail at you in a way that's not conductive to the movie going right. experience. Right. If it you were to like, read it and you're right. like, oh, wait, what did they talk about? You flip back a couple of pages and you're like, right. oh, dude, it fills you know? in the area around what is supposed to be the main story. But there's still like big gaps in the main story. Exactly. And that's mm-hmm. not like maybe take that time and put it into your main story right. instead of right. just be like details around everything. Yeah. Like it's it's kind of like it's kind of like if you're someone that's coming into Game of Thrones mid season three and you don't have that pre like previously on Game of Thrones recap, you're just jumping in. That's kinda how this movie jumping is. Jumping right into the Red Wedding. <laughs> yeah. Jumping into Red Wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's kinda how this movie yeah. is. They so you're left- having another Dune experience. Yeah. Exi- yeah. 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 Uh. yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's bad writing. It to is. like not understand that your audience will not have that information and mm. but expect them to. That's that's just yeah. not good. And I guarantee you that the 2017 version will be a much more streamlined story. It'll be yes. all about the major and nothing else. Oh, they're going to lose all it's that gonna political be all, shit. It's going to oh, be yeah, yeah. Cause you're like, It's going to be about the major 100%. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I don't see a reason it shouldn't be, you know? Right. Like, yeah, what, exactly. You know? Give her something. Exactly. Yeah. Like, she should be this kick-ass, awesome, you know, person you can get behind. And even if she does get compromised in the end, you know, it should be a good journey to follow do give her a good emotional arc do audience do audiences Mm -hmm. have to have something they can relate to in order to enjoy a movie no but it helps that's what i was going to ask watching this movie yeah are we also not having an easy time relating to these people because it is an animated movie like Mm -hmm. these aren't people they're in style and it's slow it's animated it's slow and it's cyborgs without feeling like it's like as human beings it's harder to relate to this movie I think that's why, like, Ghost and, you know, Ghost and Shell, uh, anime, like, ends up, you know, in the domain of what'd you call the Barnes and Nobles anime? Oh, uh, oh the uh, Prowlers? Manga. I, I gotta tell the story now. <laughs> so, we, uh, yeah, when yes. I worked at a certain bookstore, um, <laughs> that was not yeah, mentioned yeah, previously in this. Uh, for a while, we would have borders, people that would borders. come in and hang out at uh, hang out in the manga section, and they would never buy the books. They would just sit in the aisles and read the whole series and leave. And we called them mangoes because they were manga hobos. They would just hang out in the store and use it and then leave and never spend any money. Yeah, a lot of them. Too. That's a Barnes and Noble outlawed sitting on the floor at this point. Like, is I, that a thing we, right now? I mean, it was a thing like, where no, we're allowed. If you're sitting on the floor, we're allowed to come over to you and tell you you are a fire hazard because if there was a fire in the building and you are blocking the aisles and someone in a wheelchair or someone can't get by, that's that's what we can tell you is that you are a fire hazard. That goes back the to the floor. Mitch Hedberg joke. Is like if you have legs, <laughs> yeah, you, you are not a fire hazard. Yeah, yeah. It's like you will yeah. move if yeah. you are on fire. It's like <laughs> yeah. it's not a thing. It's just a way to get people to not. Sit on the floor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is this? But see, I, I haven't seen enough anime. You know, I mean, I know titles and I know some of what they're yeah, about in the culture, I. not the cult, the culture of the the genre a little bit, but not enough to know if they are all. You know, if this is like the appeal of it, where you know you've got a bunch of you know people who are in these anime clubs or whatever, and like you know the thing that they like about it is the technology or is mm-hmm. the the idea that. You know, there's these logical concepts going on without like emotional concepts, you know, attach them. You know, it's kind of like Kubrick doing 2001, right? Mm-hmm. Where you do like, we're going to look at something just in these, I don't know, abstract logical things or philosophy or whatever. And we're not going to get weighed down by like, you know, an, a love story right, or emotion. something like that. And I, I is that an just, appeal to the crowd who digs this stuff? They're, no, I think they just like getting swept away in something that. 
is different and not like because anime is like a weird subculture, right? It's not like part of mainstream culture, and that's what appeals yeah. to them about it. Like I think, like yeah, but you I don't want to make any something. judgments about the people sure, that do it, do that. but like the way the people that I have seen be mangoes in in the store I worked <laughs> at all dressed a certain way and all looked a certain way and were definitely not like. Glasses, hair swept to the side. Fe- lots dark. of fedoras, lots of fedoras. Uh, um, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a they thing were, in the, yep, the they were, they were not, <laughs> Yeah. They were not people that would be considered popular in high school, is what I would say. So I hey. think it's a, a society that accepts them and you know like it's a world they can get swept up in yeah but you don't get you don't you don't join a society or you know because you're like well i like the way that you dress no it's no it's it's because they're rejected from popular society and it's another one that will take them yes it's a fringe group that will take them in i just thought it was the other way around i might be wrong but the idea that you had an interest and that made you i think they do uh, start with a genuine interest but then they get just sucked but nobody else they don't seek it out just because like oh yeah yeah Yeah. we all like fedoras no they genuinely (laughs) (laughs) i think fedoras are required though (laughs) i think it's part of the dress code like well i guess if i have to yeah my interest is in this but i will wear a fedora oh man dude if you're gonna keep showing up you gotta get a hat oh Man, when I was working in the store too, so the department I was in, there was like a wall around. And so, did you and just see fedoras? I would just see fedoras. Yeah, <laughs> fedoras because floating the, by. Yeah, because on the other side of the wall, like around the whole corner, was the manga section. I would just see fedoras like float around the wall. <laughs> mangoes, mangoes, mangoes yeah, in the mangoes. wire. <laughs> mangoes, they're here. <laughs> yeah. oh, this is fascinating. Yeah. I had yeah. no oh idea yeah, there was like but, a- fedoras. Oh, and like a lot of times. If they were real deep into it and they were into specific kinds, they would wear like those furry tails. Shut oh, up! Yeah, like, shut yeah, up. yeah. I thought you were going to say trench coats, no. but you're going well, another avenue there. But furry no, tails, furry tails, tails. That yeah, makes the sense. furry tails. Yeah, furry tails and fedoras. Usually, they were drinking Mountain Dew Code Red. I had no idea know. fedoras in the store. Furry yeah. Tails. I know yeah. The- yeah. Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. I had no idea furry tails and fedoras were synonymous. Yeah, I had no idea. I mean, not always, but you're either okay. Makes so sense. fedoras, like 99, percent you're going to wear a furry tail, but like the one percent. <laughs> You're like the Rat Pack, right? You know, sure, that's what right, it is, yeah, right? You know, like, so like, yeah. two groups oh I can God. put yeah. you in. That's exactly. Frightening. Yeah. Frightening. Just yeah. saying. Like laying it out there. Weird. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you got your nerd shit. Yeah. Not the I'm there's, there's nothing. There's not a uniform. You there's not a uniform. You dress up for anything. I no. happen to know for a fact that you did in a commercial. Uh oh. That was a commercial. Colin. Colin dresses up as a furry. <laughs> that was a commercial, and it was a deer, and it was a commercial. Not me. Okay. <laughs> but that's not going sure. to a convention because you really like, you know, whatever, or to the mall character or to, or to the mall on a business yeah. day. And yeah. yeah. There's yeah. acting. And then there's thinking that you are an anime Colin character. Is a serious actor as a deer. Uh, an actor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actor. <laughs> All right. So we wrapped oh, up Ghost okay. in the Shell. Ghost We're fucking shell. done with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Colin's done. I'm done. I was like, I've been Let's get the fuck out of here. Hours. We've got, yeah, we've got mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. How do you get a hold of us? Uh, oh, man. On <laughs> Facebook. Dot com slash <laughs> Oh, we're all in a very bad place right on now. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. And on email. Saturday at Freak Show at Yahoo.com. All right. So about oh, our episode door. Demolition Man, oh. which uh, yeah we did last week, uh, two weeks ago, Stephen Webb Stevie? Stevie. wrote in Stevie on Twitter Webb. and he said that he loved this episode. Loved it. That's right. Awesome. We're yeah, curious Steve, what you we think of, of this episode, Steve. Yeah, yeah, let us know. Let us oh, know. He's going to unsubscribe please. after he's this like, episode. Um, like, no, stay I tuned, Steve. We're going to have some more 90s goodness coming yeah. your way. There you go. Yeah. Please, yeah. if you like that one, just wait. Just yeah. wait. You'll love it. Uh, Nick LaSala writes in on Facebook, says, Ha ha, the Wesley Snipes head that we posted, the, uh, you know, right. the prop yeah. of the bird. That would be awesome to have. I love that film. It'd be great if we just had it sitting around. Great mantelpiece. We've got enough props down here. Matthew Pearson says it's funny when Sandra Bullock gives Stallone a towel when they're going to quote unquote have sex. So gross. I didn't get it the first time I saw it, but in retrospect, 
It is hilarious. I didn't get it to you. Word man it, did friend. not get it to you. Mention it either. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have um, a little birds and bees talk in the freak show. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I was just focused because like, I knew, I knew the like the sex scene that was coming. So I was yeah. just like, Haha, he doesn't know he's going to like, it's going to be weird helmet VR sex. You right. know? So that's so I was like, Haha, sex you know? helmets. So I didn't even think about the fact that like she handed him a towel. You're like, oh, he's uh, just going to be sweaty. No, he's changing of fluids. Yeah. There it is. Uh, Fluids. Yeah, fluids. Yeah. All right. Fluids. Poor, poor That's people. what she said. The exchanging of fluids. <laughs> all right, so that brings us to our wrap-ups. I know oh, you're curious to York. find out what we all thought of Ghost Sean! in the Shell. <laughs> you, just call, Sean. Yeah. you just called your own name. Yeah. I did. All right. It was funnier the first time, three hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ghost in the Shell. Um, I think uh, I, have, I have problems with the movie. Um... To me, it's very. It feels like a very short movie. Maybe in only the fact that it doesn't feel like a lot happens in the movie. Um, I don't know. I don't feel like the story arcs for any of the characters are fully fleshed out. I don't think we get a full story arc for any of the characters. Um, I don't know what anybody's really wanting in this movie, whether it be major or uh, the puppet master. Like, I don't know what the ultimate goal is. And even if like. The puppet master explains that, like, I want to merge with you so that we become some higher human being. Like, we get that, they get destroyed, and then we just cut to, I think they've merged into this little girl body that the that their other partner has found for them. Like On the black market. On the black where market. Where you have little girl bodies. Apparently. At least like, it's very unclear, Fucking weird. like... What exactly everybody wants and what the ultimate goal of getting that means to us. And uh, to me, that doesn't make a full movie. Like, it doesn't, like, it's not fulfilling in any way. Um, I don't think I can recommend this. Um, it's not the, I'm, I haven't seen a lot of anime, but it's not the worst one I've seen. But I don't think I can recommend it. The story is not full to me. It doesn't uh, doesn't uh, make sense from front to back. So I can't recommend Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> Holly, what Holly. did you think <laughs> for the third time about Ghost in the Shell? Well, Ghost in the Shell, I thought was boring as all hell. I thought it was really fucking long. I don't know what you were watching, but I thought it felt long as hell. Um, it did not keep my interest. I was confused the entire movie. I hated pretty much every second of it, and I I can't recommend it to anyone ever, ever. I give it. Absolutely no ghosts, no shells, no, ghosts, no, shells. no nipples, no nothing. Aww. Just no nothing. Can't recommend it. Moving on. Well, also synced to the point. <laughs> uh, so like you've done that before. <laughs> Practice. So, so I hate anime a lot, but uh, this movie lives in my mind a lot better than it does on screen. Like uh, my memories of this movie are a lot fonder than like. It's like how we were talking about last week with Rubber. Like the more you watch it, the less you like it. Mm. Like I kind of feel the same way about this movie. Mm. Um. Maybe just the first time I watched it, I was like really young, and like just because I didn't understand sure. it, I was like, "It's great! Yeah, I don't get it, so it's <laughs> awesome!" Yeah, I don't understand it, so I just must be stupid, and it must be amazing, right? Yeah, you know, it's, it's the inception effect, you know. Like yeah. I don't get it, so it must be great. Um, it, I would say, if you're really well versed in anime, you'll probably like it. If you're not, watch Akira first, and then if you like Akira, watch Ghost in the Shell. Um, but. It's not a must watch. I would say Akira is is better than this, definitely. Um, fun fact about this movie: the only fun fact I have <laughs> that exists at that, all. Probably the only fun fact that exists about this movie is so there's a lot of random dogs for no reason in this uh-huh. movie. Uh, specifically basset hounds. Aww. That's just he was because, so sad and cute. <laughs> there's even like one of the commercial. One of them very sad. Yeah, looking, little droopy, yeah. little cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and that's just Aww. because the director really likes basset hounds, Aww. and I and, wish. More directors would yeah. make movies like that. Just put little nuggets in there just because yeah. you like it. Oh, Not for any little reason. Babies, little yeah. Furry babies. Yeah. Just well, put it in there because you like little it. Kitties. Yeah. Little kitties. Uh, little baby kitties. Little babies. And, and now that we're on our third time doing this, I'm trying to hit all the points I think I made the first two times. Um, uh, in the remake, go see it just to support Michael Pitt, who is in one of my favorite movies of all time, Funny Games. 
Uh, numbers? A, Wait, numbers? You said numbers. numbers. Murder oh, by numbers. numbers. Yeah. God damn it. Murder, yeah. by murder by numbers. Murder by numbers. Yeah. Murder by numbers. yeah. yeah. Also, a, yeah. the acclaimed actor from Dawson's Creek. Dawson's is Creek. He in Tal- <laughs> we, we did <laughs> verify yeah. it. Is he in Dawson's Creek? Okay. He, now, lost, he, was, he lost his virginity to Jen. I remember oh. the whole yeah. storyline yeah. now. He was, I remember the yeah. whole thing. Henry. He was a football player. He was in 15 episodes. He was a football yeah. player. Yep. He was a quarterback. Yep. I remember all of it now. Yeah, and he looks the same. Like, he has not aged a day. I thought he was adorable. Yeah, one of my favorite actors. Ever. So cute. Um, so I'll go yeah. see it just, just to see Did what his role is. you started somewhere in the Michael Pitt fan club on the internet? The Michael Pitt I, Pitt maybe I'll start it now. Well, Where's the we're website? Doing we'll it start now. it now. We're no, I mean, it now. like, you know. Copyright is, 2017 Saturday Night Freak Show, Michael yeah. Pitt fan club. President there you go. Vice there you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Bam. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, he was also in Boardwalk Empire. Hannibal. Uh, Hannibal. Yeah. Hannibal. Very yeah. good Hannibal. He's a great character actor. Dreamers. Yeah, he's Dreamers. He's a very good character actor. You've seen him everywhere. You just don't remember him. He's a little too much of a mama's boy in Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Whoa! Yeah. Did he fuck his mother in yes, that show? Yes, he did. Oh he my did. god! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Spoilers for Mordor. So Jesus! Yeah. I was wondering why yeah. those faces were yeah. made. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. also in the village. I just yeah. want to say that. Yeah. He was. He's, oh shit! He, he looks like he looks like a poor man's DiCaprio. Basically, That's what he looks yeah, like. You know. Like, yeah. um, Wait, I thought Dean DeHaan was the poor man's DiCaprio. No, Dean DeHaan is the poor man's. Oh, uh, he pit. was for Chronicle. <laughs> yeah. That's the line we go down. Yeah, Dean DeHaan. No one gives a shit about that guy anymore. Not really. After Chronicle, everyone's like, yeah, and then nothing. And then after fucking nothing. Spider-Man, and they're just like, yeah. Man. No, we're done um, with him. So watch Akira Spider-Man first. Spider-Man 2. No, it was that fucking thing he was just in. Uh, uh, Cure, for Cure for Wellness. Wellness. You're right. Nobody cares about it. Yeah. 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 Nobody, yeah. Nobody you saw about. that. Yeah. Yeah. You were their audience. And you were the only person at this table that saw it, right? Uh-huh. Yep. 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 That's yep. it. Um, that was his Shutter Island. Yeah. Well, that looked like I think that's an overstatement. Yeah, that's very true. I like Shutter Island. Did it have like I would not equate to place in for the first 30 minutes? No, but By, I'm sure there wasn't okay. a trailer. By saying that, you're equating Gore Verbinski with Martin Scorsese. So, <laughs> the are, poor man you want to go there? Island. You want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like Shutter Island. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but great. he's putting Gore Verbinski on that same level. I'm with saying they're movies that take place in an insane asylum, and they have guys who look identical. Yeah. Fucking Dane yeah. DeHaan and like you can't have him and identical. Yeah, yeah Dane yeah. DeHaan it, like you said poor man's Michael Pitt. Poor man's Michael yeah. Pitt. Yeah. Yeah. I would take yeah. Michael Pitt over yeah. Yeah, exactly. he's, he's earned it. Poor yeah. Dane yeah. DeHaan. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. he's yeah. put in his time. Yeah, he's putting in his time. He's been around yeah. a while. Sean just yeah. joined yeah. our fan club. Yeah. 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 All right, I am in. <laughs> Michael Pitt fan club. I will wait for the during the meeting. Yeah, it's coming soon. I will be treasurer. I will secretary. And yeah, I will be secretary of this group. Yeah. Watch Akira before you watch this movie. That's what I got to say. Colin. Colin. Uh, Ghost in the Shell is a goddamn innovative genius piece of work. I know, you totally turned me around. Oh, no. Uh, uh, How is opinion Be truthful. Truthfully, I watched this movie a couple of weeks ago. I only got about 20 minutes into it. I couldn't stand it. It was boring as shit. I'm like, why? You know, because the new movie was coming out. I'm like, I got to check this thing out again. You think you have to do these things, but you don't. (laughs) Have to. What it was? Uh, is this is where my interest is. My interest okay. is in futuristic sci-fi movies that do a projection of the future, mm-hmm. and it's it is I think a smart sci-fi movie. This <sighs> is a smarter movie than mo- what you get for a lot of science fiction. At least it's sure. asking certain questions. It's but never answer. Positing <laughs> certain ideas. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff in there that is really cool to hear, to listen to. You know. I think you're right. I think by the end of it, you're not satisfied that this is a complete film experience. I don't disagree with that, I suppose, right? So that's going to turn a lot of people off. I think the style of it, uh, the pace of it, I think would also turn a lot of people off. The style of it's really cool. Turn a lot of people on. It's uh, the extension of, I think, the future world that you see in like Blade Runner or The Fifth Element or some kind of other, you know... uh, Minority report somewhere where you're going like this is, you know, the technology that we're going to have in the future. Um, And for that, you know, it's interesting on uh, several levels, although it doesn't completely deliver. I think that's the final, you know, takeaway, right? I think so. Yeah. It's like it's awesome to look at. It's got some cool ideas. Raises some questions. Yeah. So we're hoping at this point we have not at the time of the recording, we have not seen the remake. Yeah. The remake. Potentially could be the could awesome be version of this story. I mean, it's got Michael Pitt, so you know, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why everybody's going to be lining up yeah, on fucking Michael opening Pitt. night is because Michael Scarlett Pitt Johansson. is in the movie. Nope. 
Okay, well, I'm just leaving that out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, but it was also, you know, again, I haven't felt, you know, compelled to go see Ghost in the Shell 2.0. Two Innocents or Standalone Complex, the 15 episodes, whatever the yeah, hell. No. You know, it's like I saw the one, like I was saying earlier, these are the ones that I put on Noah's Ark. If my video collection was the Ark, I fucking put on Akira and Ghost in the Shell and said, okay, I'm done with anime. anime I'm good. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I've That's tried watching Metropolis, two. which was... Uh, Kachiro Otamo. I fucking yeah. screwed that name up, but that's the yeah. Akira guy. He did another movie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I got to see it. And it sucked in Steam Boy. And I couldn't get into that. And then uh, Miyazaki can't get into those yeah. things. They're like all anime for the most part leaves me cold. I have seen good stuff. I like the Wolf Children. I'm throwing out the mention of that right, right now. But so there is stuff out there that I like. I haven't seen a lot of it, but the things that I have seen, Vampire Hunter D and Helsing and all this other stuff, it's like they don't really do it for me. There's something that always keeps me at arm length. Probably, like, there's an emotional distance, maybe, or it's the static, you know, I don't know. But Ghost in the Shell and Akira being, like, the cyberpunk era, whatever, did appeal to me. And so I think that this movie... Now that it has spawned a big budget Hollywood movie, uh, is of interest at least just to see where the what the source material is for it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think uh, like Michaela said, I think Kira uh, is the better of the two. Mm-hmm. Why we're grouping these two together? I think it's the era. Right? Yeah. So you well, could group a couple other, but these two from that era mm-hmm. were the entry point into mm-hmm. Japanese anime for American audiences. Definitely. So you say check it out. There it is. Yeah. All right. So next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we're going to watch a movie chosen by Sean. I got it out that time. Hey, bravo. Good job. <laughs> we're going to watch uh, Sam Raimi's Dark Man. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Dark Man. Yes. Like little, like, Dark, Dark Man. Man. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Like, oh, we haven't heard that twice already. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot more we'll surprising the first time well, around. Yeah. 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 Sam Raimi's Dark Man. We want to say thank you very much for sticking with through this very <laughs> loose episode so of the Saturday Night Freak <laughs> Show. We apologize uh, if we've offended anyone or we didn't include any race, any culture. <laughs> yep. Any cybernetic organism. <laughs> Them too. And Michael Pitt. And Michael Pitt. We love you, Michael Pitt. (laughs) So until next week, the basement is going dark.